This is a tutorial on how to use Excel, MATLAB, Python, and Simulink to solve parameter estimation problems, in particular dynamic parameter estimation problems where we might have an input and an output, and we have a system with some unknown or um, poorly uh, measured parameters. Um, so we have, first of all, the example is going to be in Excel. Um, we'll solve the same problem in, in MATLAB. Uh, move on to Python and then uh, finish off with uh, Simulink where we can show uh, almost a, a real-time or uh, uh, simulate the, the real-time acquisition of the data and how we use a Bayesian approach to then update uh, the parameters as we get additional information. But our objective um, is to make our model prediction um, equal to our measured uh, values. Okay, so let's um, let's just go over to an internet browser, and uh, to access the files for this, uh, visit the course website um, for dynamic optimization, and uh, then scroll down to uh, the estimation section, and here you'll find the introduction area, and then if you scroll down, uh, you'll see some files. Uh, to download here. Now this is, um, just go ahead and download this uh, zip file, save it to your desktop. Okay, so that has uh, completed. And then the thing that you need to do is, is first of all, go ahead and extract um, the files. Okay, they won't work if you don't um, extract them. Okay, so there are a number of files here. We're just going to start with the Excel, um, first of all. So if you open up Estimate, um, the Estimate folder, and I'm going to click Enable Editing. Okay, so we have um, a gain and a time constant, um, tau. And as we change those, you know, we can manually change these. Um, let me go ahead and change the gain to 1.2, for example. And then you're going to see the red line uh, update. Uh, that's our model prediction. And then maybe my tau value needs to be just a little bit um, longer. Okay, so you can see as we adjust this, we're going to be changing um, these objective function values. So let me go ahead and adjust that one more time. Um, you can see that it's going to uh, decrease. Okay, and as I get closer to the correct solution, um, then I'm, I'm going to start uh, converging uh, to and uh, get those closer to a value of zero. Um, for real systems, often you can't get it to zero because there's noise or outliers or you have imperfect models. We want to try to minimize that difference between the model and the measured value at each of the points. Okay, so um, one way to do this is to use, um, you can either do it manually or for large systems, you may want to um, do this with a solver. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so let me delete some of these uh, constraints. So I want to set the, my objective. I can either do the sum of squared errors or I can do the sum of absolute errors. Okay, I'll go ahead and switch to the sum of squared errors. Um, and then by changing cells, so let's go ahead and change um, just the gain and the time constant. Okay, and um, one of the things that we could do is, is also add a constraint. So for example, we know the time constant has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, we could add other constraints as well. Okay, um, and uh, so we've set this to minimize. Uh, you don't necessarily want to set it to a value of zero, especially if there's noise, it may not uh, converge. And then we click uh, Solve. Okay, so now you can see that um, we're lined up with uh, the model and the measured values line up. In this case, they're, they're perfect. Um, the gain was 1 and the time constant was 10. Okay, so um, this did a, a pretty good job of uh, estimating the parameters. Uh, okay, so let's go over to, I'm just going to go over to Python uh, first here. Okay, so this is a script to uh, do the same thing, but in the in Python. So I'm going to use the IDLE uh, editor, and the first thing I'm going to do is import, um, I'm just going to import the APM uh, toolkit, or the, the, uh, the, the script, this is the APM um, the, 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 you can download this uh, if you go back to the web, 
if you want to just download this you can also um, it's going to be in this uh, package but uh, you can also come over to um, the Python interface and uh, download uh, some other example problems in Python as well okay but I'm going to go back uh, here um, close this out so you just need to have the apm.py file in that folder and then I'm going to specify a server and an application and uh, then I'm going to clear uh, my prior application I'll then load my model okay so let's go to the model and uh, just take a look at that this is ferrari.apm this is just a text file where I have some constants set up so this is my automobile model um, that I also solved with Excel um, in this case I'm going to estimate um, maybe I know the mass of the vehicle so I'm just going to try to estimate a resistive coefficient and a gain okay so uh, so M M divided by B that's going to be the time constant or tau um, and then I also have my gas pedal position I can only, I can only go between 0 and 100 on that and then I have certain variables like velocity and then I'm also going to put in something there which is tau just to be able to, to um, uh, show what the value is um, of tau to compare with our Excel okay so then I have my my differential equation and uh, then also my value of tau which is m divided by b but I can write that in open equation uh, form okay so that is the um, the APM model file and then the other one is ferrari.csv and that contains my my data now, uh, by default it's going to open it up in Excel so you can see the time points um, and then I have gas pedal position and then velocity as well okay so just measured time points if you open this with um, something like uh, notepad plus plus you'll see that it's just a text file that's uh, with the data that's separated by commas okay um, and then uh, the other things in this file are uh, now I want to say that these are going to be my two parameters I'm going to uh, specify those as uh, fixed values um, then I'll turn on the status of those to make them calculated but they're going to be fixed over the horizon so there's going to be one value of k and b over all of the time points and then this is a, a controlled variable so I'm going to measure that and then when I turn on the f status the feedback status to one then it's going to try to reconcile the measured and model values so the measured values were in the CSV file and the model values will be um, predicted from the APM file okay so then I turn on the status of those two parameters to make them uh, calculated I set some lower bounds uh, for example an upper bounds on B um, I'm going to switch it to dynamic estimation mode which is I mode 5 um, this is the uh, discretization number of nodes for each time step uh, then I'm going to go ahead and solve it print the output um, retrieve the solution and then just show um, the values of K and B uh, from my terminal and then I'll open up a web viewer as the last step okay so I can hit F5 to run this or I can select uh, run module okay and this should open up a, a web viewer okay great and uh, now we can see our uh, velocity values uh, so you can see excellent agreement between the model and the measured values okay and then if I um, I can also see my values for B and K but I can also get those from the terminal where you can see down here uh, the values of K and B that were reported okay so that's the Python example let's go over to MATLAB um, so MATLAB um, you know same kind of type of script it's going to be very uh, similar to the Python example but we're going to plot a uh, little different thing that we're going to do here is just go ahead and plot the results in MATLAB so not open up the uh, and, and look at the results on the web viewer but actually go and retrieve the results for the horizon and then plot those in MATLAB okay so um, very similar script to the Python um, first of all I'm just going to clear my session um, you know just clear all the variables close all the plots and clear the screen for CLC um, add the path okay so that's uh, this is the uh, folder here that contains all of the MATLAB functions I need to run optimization problems um, and that's the APM uh, toolbox uh, and then I'm going to uh, specify a server and an application 
uh, name. So this is a server where I'm going to solve it and then give it an application name. I'm going to clear any application on that server that's um, by that same name, load the model file, load the data file. Um, here's my two parameters that I'm going to estimate. There's the velocity that I'm going to try to reconcile with the measured values. Uh, turn on my feedback status for the velocity. Uh, turn on the status for my two parameters. Um, set some bounds. Um, change it to dynamic estimation mode. And change the nodes to three. Now here's where I, where I solve it. And I'm just going to display the output of that solution to see the solver results. And then I'm going to retrieve um, my results into MATLAB with the APM underbar SOL or solution uh, function. Okay, and then um, I'll also open up the web viewer. Um, but really what I want to do is, is just go ahead and retrieve the values into MATLAB and uh, be able to plot them. Okay, so I'm going to plot um, the gas pedal position. Okay, that was fed in through the data file. Um, and then I'll also show the actual and then the optimized parameters there on the plot. I'm going to do a second subplot. Um, and in this case, I'll show the velocity that's measured. Um, and then also the model predicted velocity after I've uh, optimized those parameters. Okay, so if I hit F5 or run, um, okay, so it's going to open up the same kind of web viewer. But this is going to be the thing that's different from the Python. I could have done this in Python as well. Um, but just to show that I can uh, retrieve these results into MATLAB and then plot uh, the solution. So you can see that the actual parameters were k equals 1, b equals 50, and then the optimized parameters, uh, you know, very close there. And you can see excellent agreement between the measured and the predicted values as well. So now I want to do something just a little bit different, which is go on to uh, somewhat of a real-time uh, simulation where we're emulating, um, you know, we're going to emulate um, in Simulink um, the, as, as a car is at rest and then starts to accelerate. Um, can we perform this parameter estimation with a, a Bayesian approach or, or where we uh, take these uh, data one step at a time to then estimate, uh, re-estimate the parameters for our model. So I have my uh, Ferrari here. This is my dynamic model with a gain of one and a time constant of 10. Let me go ahead and make this just a little bit uh, bigger so that we can see it hitting control plus. Um, Okay, so then I also put in a band limited white noise. Uh, I'm just going to corrupt uh, the uh, true value of the velocity with um, some noise to emulate um, a real system. Okay, so corrupting the measurements. And uh, I also have the, the gas pedal position that's going to step from 0 to 100%. And that's going to uh, then use this transfer function to produce the velocity. But then I'm also going to transfer that information into my estimator. So I'll be able to see the measurements and then uh, be able to see the parameters, the, the uh, k and the um, tau value that, that come out of this. OK, so um, let me go ahead and just open this up. This is EST under bar APM. Okay, sample time was one, so every second it's going to, to recompute. Um, let me just open that up in uh, MATLAB. Okay, um, okay, so here's my, my function. This is just the very first time, very similar to um, how I set up those other scripts. But it's just the very first cycle, you have to set up the problem, load the model, load the data. Uh, I'll actually not load the data, we'll get those uh, from the Simulink model. Um, but just set up the variable classification, some of the options, and just initialize a counter. Okay, so then uh, what we're going to do later down is um, uh, here in the script, let me go ahead and scroll back down. Um, then is, uh, so this is only, this, this section up here is only going to happen every, you know, just the first cycle. But then um, the rest of this is going to happen every cycle. Okay, so we're going to insert the measurements for the velocity and the gas pedal. And uh, the velocity was the input 1, or u1, and uh, gas pedal was u2, or input 2. Then we're going to solve the estimation problem um, with the solve command, and then uh, output um, the new value for the k, and then also uh, the tau value. That was a, a predicted value, so we'll do tau.model. 
Um, and then we'll also display those values at the terminal as well. Okay, so let's, um, let's run through this in the Simulink. So when I start it, I'm just going to simulate for 20 cycles and um, open up this uh, parameter dialog uh, to, to be able to view uh, the parameter estimates as we go. Okay, so let me rescale that. So there you can see in the purple is the tau and then the gain is in the uh, yellow. Um, and so you can see initially, right when you started accelerating, uh, the tau was initialized to a value of 25. It dropped down and then was uh, asymptotically converging back to 10. And uh, the gain went up to a value of about 2 and then uh, settled in on a value of about 1. Okay, so there you can see some uh, real-time, emulating the real-time estimation of these parameters with a moving horizon approach or moving horizon uh, estimation. Okay, so that uh, concludes this tutorial. We've shown um, the estimation of uh, in, in uh, Excel, in Python, uh, MATLAB, um, and then also in uh, Simulink.